Good morning to the Twin Sioux, Algoma, and Chippewa. Thank you very much for joining us for a special report here on Wednesday, September the 30th, the last day of September, which means tomorrow we are hitting October, which uh, you mm -hmm. uh, informed us yesterday that October could see some snow. Absolutely, that's still in the cards. Yeah, so I'm Chris Holker, and I'm here with Daniel LePred, and thank you very much, Casey Securities, for sponsoring our show. Yes, good morning. You will morning. notice that we are in orange. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. I didn't realize that I went into my closet this yeah. morning. And I couldn't find really any. I found a, one of my Cuba classic car shirts here, yeah. t-shirts. I don't really have a lot of orange. I, I have. I one. have some off-colored orange yeah. and like salmon-colored and like pinkish shirts, but I don't have any orange. Yeah, I. Uh, this is uh, this is my orange. Yeah. Uh, so I was lucky. I looked in my closet. I'm like, yep, I got something. Uh, at least I can wear something today. But so. it is orange shirt day today. It is orange shirt so. day for Indigenous reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's obviously. Uh, events and stuff going on, most of them being virtual, obviously, this year. Right. Uh, but uh, you can actually go to our website, and there's actually a story on it there as well, so you can get some background. And the Liberals are also talking about making September 30th a holiday as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, speaking of the Liberals, uh, Trudeau's going to be on twice today here on, on TV, so you can come back here twice today at 9 a.m. He's going to be speaking on biodiversity at the United Nations, obviously virtually. And then also at 2 p.m. we'll be carrying question period today and Justin Trudeau will be in question period today as well, just like he was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And also we will have Doug Ford as Norrell at 1 p.m. Right. coming from Queen's Park today. Uh, today he'll just be joined with uh, Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier Minister of Health, as well as Dr. David Williams, who is the uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health for Ontario. So uh, make sure you come back for 9, 1, and 2. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Not so good news to start off with, um, and that is about uh, yes, the is... OPP came out with a report on uh, opioid abuse uh, in Ontario. Uh, th this is something that comes out every year. Now, this is the report about 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, they saw a 34% increase in overdose deaths in 2019 Ooh. compared to 2018. As well, um, they saw a massive spike in arrests connected to opioid deaths. Okay. Normally, so now they're going after the drug dealers, for example, who are selling these pills. That's right. Uh, so they're actually, able, they're charging more of them now. So between 2018 and 2019, there's a 500% increase in charges laid related to opioid overdose deaths, which is a huge increase. Oh, that's big. Because they're now really starting to go after the dealers and things like that, that they weren't necessarily doing in the past. So mm -hmm. there's a 500% increase uh, year over year in opioid related death charges. So yeah. that is a, quite a striking stat. You can get that all is. the info on our website as well at suonline.com. Uh, and you can read the uh, report there a little bit more in-depthly if you would like. Absolutely. And we have some news for traffic and road closures mm -hmm. this morning. If you are out and about, um, there was quite the downpour going on too in the yeah. last hour or so on and off. Uh, a sanitary lateral on the Upper East End of McNabb will cause traffic issues for the next couple days. So Public Works is advising that they will be shutting down the section of McNabb starting at 7 a.m. today. And it's planned. The, they are planning to only have it closed for two days. If all goes well, members of the public are being asked to be cautious and be aware that a detour will be in place. And if you need to get to the credit northern credit union there the only access will be from chapel street for those days so to keep right. that in mind yeah um also on the american side in sioux michigan the i-75 business bird there's a lane closure there as well until october the 2nd mm -hmm. okay uh speaking on the american side governor whitmer is obviously watching the numbers very closely with covid 19 in the upper Pen peninsula uh on the american side they have a six phase opening uh, strategy in mm -hmm. Michigan. Uh, the, the entire Upper Peninsula right now is in stage five, but there are some areas where numbers are spiking, uh, and so they're watching that closely. And if the numbers continue to go up, then Mich the Upper Peninsula will then move back to stage four, possibly even stage three, okay. depending on the outbreak. So uh, the governor's watching that closely, and if the cases continue to spike. Now, there as far as Sault Ste. Marie goes on the Michigan side, there's not a spike in cases there. It's over Iron, Delta, and Houghton area. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, you can find that out on our website as well. Uh, their cases, they only have a few active cases right now. It's not considered a... Yeah, um, similar to here. Kind of yeah, thing. it's very similar to here. They, In total, they only have about 52 cases um, from the beginning of the pandemic. Right, only, so they're doing pretty well. Yeah, they only there. have three or four active cases right now. There's not a spike there, so... but. 
the, it, but the entire upper peninsula is treated as one. So with yes. the spike happening over in the other, in the more western part of the upper peninsula, it will affect the eastern part of the peninsula as well. That's right. So, um, so as mentioned at the top of the show today, September 30th, the, li the Liberals are looking to revive efforts to make September 30th a holiday for Indigenous reconciliation. Uh, Heritage Minister Stephen Gilbo introduced legislation in the House of Commons to establish September 30th as that national day for truth and reconciliation for federally regulated workers. So mm -hmm. the date is already known as Orange Shirt Day. An that's the reason our orange shirts. Right. <laughs> an occasion to commemorate the experiences of First Nations, Métis and Inuit children in residential schools. So we'll see if they come through with that and actually have it a national holiday. Yeah, well... I mean, it, it is good that we're bringing attention to it, yes. and and um, like bringing attention to it yearly as yes. well, uh, instead of sort of like every once in a while talking about it. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's good that they're actually trying to move forward here and work on reconciliation. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, this is a big issue in the Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma region. Yes, so, very important around here because uh, we have. Uh, a lot of different uh, indigenous bands in this area, so mm. uh, including right here inside of the boundaries of Sault Ste. Marie. Never mind when you, you know, when you go, go outside out to the other the parts of Algoma. And so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, council, speaking of uh, government, uh, Civic Plaza. We talked a bit about this yesterday, uh, but the city is moving forward with the Civic Plaza. Uh, the estimated cost is somewhere around six point six million. Uh, it's been flown around as high as seven and low as six, but basically hmm. six and a half, six point six million dollars is what the cost will be right now. Right. Um, now there's a bunch of different parts, uh, as you can see on your screen there. There's a water area now that's uh, going to be an ice skating rink in the winter time, and it doubles as a water park in the summertime. The southern end uh, can be used for concerts, a uh, new place for the farmers market. Uh, plus, there's parking at the south end as well that you can see on the on the screen there too, mm -hmm. uh, and also it, it opens up uh, that area to be a walkway as well in downtown too. So there are, there is a bunch of positives connected to that project. All of the councillors voted for it. Uh, they're very excited about it. The issue now is uh, who's going to pay for it, mm -hmm. um, and they're going toward to uh, the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation and FedNor uh, to try and get funding for this project. Uh, we reached out to both to find out if they. Um, plan on you know are they putting in some sort of a bid for this how mm -hmm. what is the pro how does what does this actually look like when they're applying for funding for this how, how much would they fund how much does the city have to chip in themselves because mm -hmm. all of these government contracts when you go to a provincial body you have to kick in so much money locally they do, as yeah, well. right? so the city would have to put in exactly their share i mean it, it can be even as high as 60 percent for what mm -hmm. the city has to kick in depending on the type of grant it is and who they're applying the grant to and so on Okay. Yeah. COVID. Back to, Back to COVID. Michigan and COVID. There has been some outbreaks in Michigan yep. schools. New and ongoing school-related outbreaks have led to more than 4,000 Michigan residents becoming infected by the novel coronavirus. That's according to data released Monday by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. This includes nearly 2,000 students and staff at 46 K-12 schools. However, the bulk of cases appear to be on or around 26 college campuses across mm -hmm. the state, representing more than 3,800 COVID-19 cases. These outbreaks have affected dozens, affected dozens of staff at 26 K-12 schools, as well as the University of Michigan, Western Michigan, Saginaw Valley State, and Calvin and Adrian Colleges. Yeah. So there's some you know, yeah. hot spots there and little outbreaks. Yeah, there was a, a minor outbreak at Lake Superior State uh, when they opened up at the beginning of September. They had five students test positive for COVID-19. I remember they, that, yeah. But, uh, all five of those cases are resolved and they don't have any new cases since then. Um, so Lake Superior State uh, is using social distancing, using masks and all the precautions mm -hmm. and they're still having in-person classes. Yeah. Uh, their campus is much more open than uh, the, you know, the university on this side that's pretty locked down. That's right. Uh, okay, we now have a second COVID uh, assessment center here in Sault Ste. Marie. It is on Second Line Road. It is actually right next to the West End Walk-In Clinic. Uh, that is at 658 Second Line West. It is open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the interesting thing about this assessment center is you don't need an appointment. If you're going to the first assessment center mm -hmm. that's over here uh, just off of Great Northern, uh, that one you need an appointment to go to. This mm -hmm. one you can just go to. Uh, and so if you want to go and get a test, they will. Uh, you have to obviously go through screening before they'll administer the test. Yes. Uh, but you don't need an appointment to go to that one. So if you do want to get a COVID-19 test, you think you may or may not have it or that you may or may not have been exposed to it, uh, you can actually go there without having to call first and get an appointment. 
And if I'm not mistaken, they never sent a press release about that. I know they? they did not. I did see you make yeah. a mention of that. So. Yeah, there was no there was no information from Algoma Public Health other than they posted to their uh, Facebook and uh, mm -hmm. Twitter accounts. There was no press release at all. So it's a good thing we pay attention to those. Yeah, things. it's uh, we actually like normally that would be a, from Algoma Public Health. We just have their press release and we post that, but That's no right. such thing existed. Well, uh, surprise, so, surprise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so we are going to look at our camera here momentarily. It's a little hazy, I've been told by producer Mike. And yeah, it looks like it is. Uh, as you probably know, if you went out to work after around 6 in the morning or shortly after, we had quite the downpour going on throughout that hour, on and off, slowed down a bit, then picked back up. We did have that major power outage yesterday too, yeah. uh, which was just after 5 p.m. Yeah, there. Affecting, affecting out in the west end there. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, from Great Northern Road, which even affected here, yeah. all the way to the west and all the way to Grow Cap. So we are going to see another wet day, though. It's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag. I haven't had to use that term in a while, but make sure you do have your umbrella and all that fun stuff because you're probably going to need it for certain parts and i'll have those details coming up after the break as well as your three-day forecast our weather is brought to you by northern lights detailing and our camera there is sponsored by wirelesscom.ca we'll be back right after this short break Every three seconds, someone will develop Alzheimer's, a fatal disease that steals your memories and makes you forget the people you love most. Fortunately, there is hope. Today, researchers believe a cure is just a few years away. It's okay, Daddy, you can go. Just go. For just $9 a month, you can fund research for a cure and make history by ending this disease. message from the government of Canada. It's been a while since I've seen Joe. We were a couple of pranksters, and Joe was always full of surprises. But today, he's the one in for a surprise. The thing is, Joe doesn't live here anymore. For people living with dementia, getting lost can happen unexpectedly. Are you ready to help? Help people living with dementia live safely in our communities. Contact your local Alzheimer's Society and visit FindingYourWayOntario.ca Hey, good morning and welcome back to Special Report on this last day of September, Wednesday, September 30th. And want to thank our sponsors once again, KC Security for the show, Northern Lights Detailing for the weather at 632 Great Northern Road, and then our, our camera, which is brought to you by wirelesscom.ca. Good morning to Karen watching on Facebook. We'll get to some more Facebook shoutouts later on when Chris and I come back. But let's look at that radar. Oh, well, you know, as you, if like I said, if you were out this morning, you can see here, here's this pocket. Got a yellow cell right over us here. This is what was moving through. We had that heavy rain. This system is pushing its way through. And, well, we're going to see a little bit of a break from things. Once we get through uh, today and into uh, Friday, we're going to see those temperatures dip. Actually, tomorrow's Thursday, so I'm ahead of myself. So once we get through... Uh, tomorrow as well then we will start to see those temperatures really decline and get close to the freezing mark on Friday night so let's get ready for some more um, cold weather but let's get through these details here for your regional temperatures and all that fun stuff so currently we are sitting at 10 degrees out there 
We've got a 15 degree high today. So what you're expecting is showers are gonna end early in the morning, then cloudy with 60% chance of a showers for the rest of the day. There is a risk of a thunderstorm also late this morning and in the afternoon. Uh, as you saw in the camera, it's a bit hazy. So there's some fog patches. They will dissipate as well this morning. Winds are gonna pick up once again though. They're gonna be southwest uh, 20 kilometers. I don't know why it got northwest on there. My apologies. So they're gonna be Oh no, it's northwest. Wind's becoming northwest. 40, gusting to 60 this morning. It's one of those mornings. And just in case you're wondering if you need sunscreen, the UV index is one. So you don't really gotta worry about that. Low of eight degrees overnight. Okay, there we go. So here is our expected highs for the region today. Not a lot going on, 13 degrees in Thunder Bay, 12 in Wawa, as well as in Timmins, 15 here as mentioned in Sault Ste. Marie, 13 in Elliott Lake, and 12 in Sudbury. And those overnight lows are in single digits. Fours in Thunder Bay, Wawa, and Timmins, eight here in Sault Ste. Marie, six in Elliott Lake, and seven in Sudbury. So we're Starting that trend for cooling down, as I mentioned, Thursday, you're only going to see a high of 9 degrees, 70% chance of sh showers, cloudy changing to 30% in the morning. Those winds will be gusting Thursday, once again, gusting up to 50 kilometers. And we are going to see overnight, 60% chance of a shower as well. 3 degrees is your overnight low. Then, Friday, here's where that cooling trend starts. So we're looking at 7 degrees. It's about a 30% chance of a shower, which is why I have the partly... Uh, sunny icon up there because we're going to see that most of the day and then as we get into Friday night we are looking at a low of zero the freezing mark that's right folks so if there's any precipitation it could come down in the form of wet flurries so just keep that in mind um, we are looking at nine degrees on Saturday with some clouds and a 30 percent chance of showers on Saturday night once again three degrees overnight so I know there's a lot of percentages there and I mentioned there's a lot of different variations but you are going to see some precipitation for the next few days long range kind of hit and miss as well. But looking ahead to mid-October, we make it up into the high teens for a few days. So there's something to look forward to. That is long range, so it may change. <laughs> but anyways, in the during the break, go to suonline.com, check out all those stories that we present to you as well as the weather, and make sure you like our Facebook page on there. Chris and I will be right back after this short break with more news. At the Canadian Cancer Society, we will never stop supporting those affected by breast cancer through research, our helpline, and being there when you need us. Join us and never stop running. we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health supports more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know. Asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help.
Welcome back to Special Report for Wednesday, September the 30th. We have made it to the end of the month. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Casey Securities, for your sponsorship. Thank you to Northern Lights Detailing for sponsoring the weather. Thank you to Wireless Club for giving us those beautiful pictures of the downtown each morning as well. Uh, a couple of events coming up. Uh, Culture Days Fall Market's coming up. It's uh, tomorrow, October the 1st. It's from 4 to 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, this is obviously connected with the Downtown Association and the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Uh, you will be able to go to 690 Queen Street East, which is uh, right behind the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Uh, and tents will be set up there with all the vendors and artists and food and beverage and so on. So if you would like to go do that, I would greatly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, during this time, it's uh, charities are doing whatever they can and organizations to uh, try to stay afloat because obviously the museum yes. does not have its normal revenue source because it's not open, unfortunately. And it's something to do if you want to get it's up to It's also something to do to get out of the house as well. Yeah. Yep. So uh, that's something to do. Um, one thing we would not suggest you do is trafficking. Um, <laughs> yes. That is uh, <laughs> probably a better idea to go to the market than doing some drug trafficking. Oh. Uh, you might get arrested for that. Yes. Whereas at the market, you're doing a good thing. You're doing a good thing. So on September 28th, officers with patrol services arrested 43 year old John Hodgson Reedy. At 8.55, they responded to a call at 8.55 p.m. Officers responded to a call of an unwanted person in the 500 block of Trunk Road. Upon arrival, the unwanted person, the accused, was no longer in the area. Uh, he, the officers learned that he is in conditions not to attend this area, and he is wanted for a similar occurrence on September 27th, the day before. He was later located and arrested. Subsequent search found him to be in possession of 41 packages containing varying, varying amounts of what is believed to be fentanyl, a bag with approximately 14.81 grams of what is believed to be fentanyl and 0.23 grams of what is believed to be cocaine. Estimated value, it's 9,368. He will be charged with possession of a controlled substance. Purpose of trafficking, possession of a controlled substance and two counts of breach of probation. He will appear in court on November 2nd, 2020. So ah. there you go, that's a lot going on yeah. in that one there. Yeah, and fentanyl is so dangerous too. Yes. Um, now, uh, let's talk some sports. Uh, Sumo Ooh. Mines, your source for all two sports. Uh, last night, the Blue Jays started their wild card series against Tampa Bay Rays. They lost. 3-1. Uh, <laughs> not Tampa a blowout at least. Yeah, not a blowout at least. So uh, the, uh, the Rays are up 1-0 uh, in the series. Uh, next game starts tomorrow. Uh, the Yankees, speaking of blowouts, mm -hmm. yes, the Yankees blew out the Cleveland Indians. 12 to 3. Uh, the Yankees now lead that series. Obviously, won nothing as well. That's uh, because of the first wild card games all started yesterday. Right. And then also tonight, exciting times in the NBA. We are now at the NBA Finals. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the Miami Heat versus the Los Angeles Lakers. Wow. Figures I move away from Miami and, and then, get back in. <laughs> get back in, yeah. I was there the first time, though. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so they, uh, they will be playing tonight at 9 p.m. Uh, so the NBA Finals will be starting. Stanley Cup just finished with Tampa Bay Lightning winning. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays are beating the Jays, so who knows? You might see Tampa Bay well, Rays win uh, the World Series as well. Yeah, so it, but it, stay tuned for that. It, it could happen, yeah. yeah. Speaking of sports. Uh, well, quickly before we go to break, Michigan Out of Doors is open yes. for fall fun. Some DNR facilities, including customer service centers, are remaining closed, however. Uh, so as the weather cools, foliage warms to vibrant yellows and reds. There's plenty to do in Michigan's great outdoors from hiking, biking, and more than 13,000 miles of picturesque trails spanning both peninsulas, taking fall colors or touring camping tours, color to taking fall color tours or camping adventures at state parks. Michigan is open for fall fun. There so, we go. You know, make sure you get out of yeah. Michigan Lake. Here is beautiful this yeah. time of year, and all here, and it's beautiful out, outdoors on the uh, terrace side as well. So uh, yes, it's stuff you can do uh, yep. because it's not indoors. Yep. Uh, and there's no limit to how far you can walk, walk out in the bush as long as you walk back. That's uh, right. Alrighty, uh, we gotta hit a commercial break, but we'll be right back in two minutes with the seven-day forecast. Without making a few mistakes down the road, a few sharp turns, and doing things for what we adore but might regret later. 
A trip to Chuck's Roadhouse isn't one of them. With melt-in-your-mouth AAA steaks, buttery lobster tail, half-priced apps after 9 p.m., a nice cold draft with all your Roadhouse favorites. Chuck's Roadhouse. Food the way it ought to be. Priced the way it used to be. For all those times Every three seconds, someone will develop Alzheimer's. A fatal disease that steals your memories and makes you forget the people you love most. Fortunately, there is hope. Today, researchers believe a cure is just a few years away. It's okay, Daddy, you can go. Just go. For just $9 a month, you can fund research for a cure and make history by ending this disease. Recently, the government of Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. back to Special Report for Wednesday, September the 30th. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you to Casey Securities for your sponsorship. We've got a couple Facebook shoutouts here. Uh, so good morning to Karen as well. Uh, good morning to Lee. And Lee says, love the orange shirts and four colors of hearts after it. So yes. we're, yeah. we're glad you liked it. Yes. Uh, and if you want to interact when we are on the air, you can go to the Sue Online Facebook page, click on the video, and there's a chat box that will come up on the right-hand side of the page. And you can interact with us when we're live on the air. Absolutely. Now time for some so, weather. So, seven day weather. There's lots of orange too outside in the uh, fall colors if you can mm -hmm. get out and enjoy it. But it is going to be wet still for a couple days. Friday we will see a change though. It will drop down seven degrees is your high. Zero overnight. Cloudy again on Saturday and then we'll see a mix of sun and cloud with some chance of showers over the next few days up to 14 by Tuesday and overnight lows as mentioned 3 degrees on Thursday down to zero then a slowly creep back up and be 11 degrees by Tuesday night so we'll be creeping back up a little bit above seasonal. We're going to look at our weather watcher now. This is from our very own Dan Gray. And, and you know he's exploring when he first got here right looking at enjoying the city so uh, thank you very much for getting this photo in for us, Dan. On TV weather at gmail.com is where you can send your weather photos and videos, include your name and location. They go up on the show and, of course, on sueonline.com every morning at 6 a.m., which then puts them to our social medias. Yes, so. and uh, speaking of social media, you know, Donald Trump has quite a large uh, Twitter following, uh, yes. but last night was the debate. Um, yeah. Did you watch any of it? Yes. So did I. I watched yes. about the first hour. Um, it was interesting. Yep. Uh, it was very similar to Canadian debates where they just talk over each other the mm -hmm. whole time, uh, except they're instead of five people talking all over each other, it's two. Yep. Um, it was very interesting on certain things Biden wouldn't answer that Trump asked him, and certain things Biden asked Trump, Trump wouldn't answer. Uh, there was Biden wouldn't, wouldn't give a definitive answer on whether or not he'd stack the Supreme Court with more justices, so mm -hmm. it would be more in a progressive direction than a conservative direction. Because uh, obviously, right now, uh, with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg just passing away, mm -hmm. that seat's now open. And he wants Amy Coney and Barrett. Yes, he wants Amy in there on that seat. She's obviously an originalist uh, uh, conservative. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a constitutionalist as well, and that would mean that there would be six constitutionalists and three non-constitutionalists on the Supreme Court. So that was a very big thing part of last night because there's a lot of mm -hmm. controversy about that. Even though it's normal for a president to nominate a uh, Supreme Court justice, uh, even if it's in an election year, you're elected for four years. Trump pointed yep. that out. He was elected for four years, not three, and he's still in until January. That's right. And it's in his... Uh, responsibility to the country uh, to actually nominate a justice and get things moving again because right yeah. now the court is split 4-4 which means you can have ties. That's right. So, that's um, so yeah and then Biden blew up at Trump once calling him a clown oh, which is obviously the very Chris. disrespectful to the President of the United States regardless of what you think of him that is not a respectful comment. I also told 
uh, Trump to shut up a couple times. Um, but mm -hmm. anyways, uh, speaking of politicians, uh, we'll have uh, Trudeau on at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. today, and Doug Ford will be here at 1, and I'll be back here at 1 p.m. with Daniel for Doug Ford's press conference. Have a fantastic morning. See you later.